This is the pre-release material for OCRB for 2025. Now, if you're a student, I'm sure that you've already downloaded your own copy and have a good read through. So I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but I thought I'd just go through some of the things that I picked up and, I, and maybe how this could be assessed possibly with some questions in your real exam. Um, first of all, I actually found the whole thing actually quite interesting to read. So uh, the first bit, there's a bit of the sort of history. And I suppose my approach would be, if I was you, but if there, are, if there are people here um, who are kind of mentioned, I just do a quick Google, even maybe look on uh, ChatGPT or Claude or something, just to find out a little bit more about some of these people. Um, the first thing I thought was that if we've got a, a question here where we've got something which is maybe moving up and down and there's something else rotating, and of course it also gives our kind of typical speed of about a metre per second for this, um, maybe that could then relate the trace that we see on the drum, which I guess would sort of look uh, a bit, I guess, like how we sort of think of a sound wave looking if we see it on the oscilloscope. Um, it might relate maybe the length of this to something about the speed of rotation, and therefore there may be something to do with circular motion. Um, we know, of course, that if we've got something moving here, um, the velocity at the edge is going to be equal to r omega, uh, where omega is going to be the um, the angular frequency. So there may be something that looks or is relating the, the radius or the diameter of this thing which is rotating to maybe how fast that trace is actually appearing on that. Um, and there, for example, I guess you could, if you knew how quickly this was rotating, you could then work out the frequency of some of these. Uh, the other thing, uh, and I think if you haven't already done so, you do go and have a look at this. Um, I just kind of went to this URL. I listened to the sound, uh, which sounds like this. And I was initially completely dismayed by the quality of it. You could hardly hear what they're saying. There's this kind of warbling kind of noise. Um, but it's something that I think you do need to listen to a few times and I guess really think about how, um, how much microphones have improved. And also, I guess, how we have this really noisy signal where there's so much interference because of the low quality that we get here. OK, so I'm sure you've already heard that. Um, I guess then there's something which, again, maybe um, asked about in the exam, not just about the actual physics of microphones, but I guess also, uh, I guess, the sort of the social impact of things. And, you know, looking at this picture here, um, again, this picture here is kind of very much a load of white middle class males. Um, who I guess traditionally were the people seen to be um, in charge of things in the world. And obviously that's, you know, over 100 years ago now. Things have changed quite a lot since then. Um, although I'm sure looking around here, you could probably see somebody who actually probably looks like one of your physics teachers at some point. OK, um, then we have dynamic microphones. Now, dynamic microphones are our standard type of microphone that you'll have probably maybe learnt about at GCSE and even A-level so far. So this is very much um, just thinking about how if you move um, something in a magnetic field, we're going to get um, uh, an EMF and therefore you might have a current in a wire. So I think that these dynamic microphones um, are going to be relatively straightforward if there are any questions asked about it, because that's already stuff you've learned about when you've been looking at, um, you know, if you're looking at fields, EM induction, all that kind of good stuff. Something which is different is about the sensitivity. Um, and this is because what we have is we have some resonant frequencies. So this might link to the work you've done on simple harmonic motion, where you might have a graph that looks at uh, resonance. OK, you, may, you maybe have a graph that kind of looks like this. And what we need to think about is how the system can be damped. So at the resonant frequency, we don't have this large amplitude. And instead, you've got to think about as things are being damped, what that does to the um, overall motion and how that might adjust the resonant frequency and maybe adjust that slightly. So just you already need to know this anyway. You need to know about resonance and how that could be maybe represented on the graph. I suspect also they might give you a graph that you haven't seen before, looking at the sensitivity of these dynamic microphones at different uh, frequencies. So it does say um, that uh, this falls off at frequencies of over 16 kilohertz and is near zero at 20 kilohertz, which is the, the upper threshold for human hearing. Um, so I guess there may be some graph that you haven't seen before that maybe you need to interpret. Now, condenser microphones. This is where 
I see them asking some questions related to this equation over here. Now for OCRB, this is not an equation that you need to know about. However, students who do AQA physics, this is part of um, the kind of core specification. And there are other exam questions that use this. So for example, if you want to go to my past paper finder, if you look for the AQA paper, uh, and you look for paper two, and you look for the 2022 paper, there are two multiple choice questions that use this. If you look at question 19 and question 20, um, sorry, I messed it up, haven't I? Uh, question 20, I can't show them on YouTube because of copyright, but you can find my work solutions to these. Um, that gives you an indication of the type of questions which are asked about uh, where we look at this parallel plate capacitor with a dielectric in the middle. Okay, and that's basically what we have here. I also have a full video about that, and I'll put the link to this video where I explain all of this um, beneath this. So if you've got a premium plan or you have a, your school has a school subscription, you can watch the video where I explain all the physics behind that. Okay, um, so that is the kind of condenser microphone. Uh, the next one is the electret electret microphones. Um, again, if you're doing research on this, as I'm sure you are, um, it's worth if you're having a look at using either Google or maybe looking at AI. Um, for example, I just went to Claude and I typed in, explain how an electret microphone works for an A-level physics student. Um, and that then gave like a brief description of this. The key thing I think here that they could ask about, and it kind of talks about here as well, is that effectively we've got two different capacitors. And therefore, we've got the capacitance of the uh, electret material. And we also have the capacitance due to the air gap. So here you need to think about equations where we have capacitors connected in series. OK, um, and so I think that's something if you haven't already done so. Uh, and again, you should know about capacitors in parallel or capacitors in series. Maybe how this is analogous to the way that springs work. Um, but you need to think about if you've got capacitors in series and you've got the capacitance of each of these um, and then how that's related to maybe the overall charge stored or the potential difference across each of, of those. And I think that's something that you really need to sort of concentrate on. And finally, we have these MEMS, these micro electrical mechanical systems, uh, which make microphones even smaller. And there's no nothing here really about how they work. Obviously, again, it's worth just having a quick Google and finding out a little bit more about these. But I don't think there's going to be a question so much on how these work. But potentially there could be a question that's linked to the fact that we've got miniaturization in the future that's going to make everything even smaller. So rather than thinking about microphones using capacitors and being a kind of physical big thing, this means that maybe these things can actually pick up sounds even though you can hardly see them because they're so small. And therefore there may be a kind of sort of social question about how these could be used in the future. So yeah, um, I think overall this was actually an interesting thing to read. I, I learned definitely learnt stuff from it. Um, of course, I'm, I've no idea exactly what they're going to ask about. Um, but again, it's the kind of thing that you need to be super familiar with this. You need to be able to like think about every single paragraph. You need to have a good understanding of all of the, the underlying physics anyway, which you need to know for all of your other papers. Um, but I think condenser microphones, that's an area to really look at. And also thinking about capacitors in series and how that is related to the electric microphones. Electret. I'm not very good at saying that word. It's a word that's new to me. Anyway, uh, just a few of my thoughts there, and I'm sure your teachers will go through many things as well. And of course, if you've got anything that you'd like to share, please put it in the comments beneath this video, things that you found out or any discussion you might have. You can easily chat with hundreds of other people, potentially, who might also be doing the OCRB paper in 2025. <laughs>